Now, if we look at the strains, um, as Ravi pointed out, you can see that the strains are pretty similar between the egg-based vaccines and the cell culture or recombinant-based vaccines. But just notice that the um, H1N1 component of the um, vaccine is a little bit different depending upon whether you're using an egg-based vaccine or a cell culture or recombinant-based vaccine. And when we look at real-world data, of egg-based vaccine versus cell culture-based um, influenza vaccine, we know that the traditional uh, manufacturing process for influenza vaccines has relied on fertilized chicken eggs um, that are used for vaccine production. Um, and it, each dose of vaccine requires four fertilized eggs. So as Ravi pointed out, there may be a little bit of an egg shortage. And if you think about, you need four eggs for every dose of vaccine, you can multiply that by millions and you can see how many eggs are needed in order to produce a large enough quantity of egg-based vaccine. This particular process usually requires approximately six months um, to be completed. As Ravi pointed out, egg adaptation um, of seed viruses occurs when the viruses um, that are grown in eggs adapt to avian receptors found within the eggs um, to allow for growth in the eggs. And because you have changes in key viral antigens, this can result in antigen mismatch and reduce vaccine effectiveness. When you look at cell-derived seed viruses, they do not require fertilized eggs because they're grown in cell culture, and this eliminates the potential for any egg-adapted changes. And therefore, vaccines that are produced through cell um, culture-based process actually improves the match between the vaccine virus strain and the virus that's circulating in the community. And this has been associated with increased vaccine effectiveness during a predominantly H3N2 season. 